the Northwest Division. Let me give this to you, last season standings. First, Oklahoma City, top record in the entire conference at 57 and 25. Denver, same record, 57 and 25, finished second. Minnesota, 56 and 26, a game back from the top, uh, from the leaders in the conference. Utah Jazz in fourth, 31 and 51. Portland, 21 and 61 to round out the conference. Before I jump into breakdowns of each one of these teams, I had a question for you guys. Do you think this is the best division in the sport? Top down? I, I would say so, undoubtedly. I don't know who would. I don't think I would pick anybody over them. I think you just look at the talent across all of those teams. And yeah, I mean, especially Denver, Minnesota, Oklahoma, those top three alone. Incredible. Utah's frisky. Utah's frisky. We don't know what Portland is. Or is that just That's a question, a question mark? mark? Yeah. Portland. Wait, I'm, I'm extremely high on the Thunder. I'll, I'll say it. They're, they're, Coleman will go on a you know big, deep, uh, in-depth review of these folks. But, man, I love them. Yeah. No, I, I, think- I agree with you. And, and they're the first team I'm going to start out with tonight. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are what, no offense, Luke, they are what the Grizzlies should have been. <laughs> they are young fun really and the best team last year in the entire western conference they have an mvp candidate point guard in shay gill shay gill just alexander they traded for caruso they traded josh giddy for caruso which is an excellent excellent trade for them bringing in more defense a veteran guy and a guy who doesn't you know hit on underage women so already a plus from there we have lou dort jalen williams the first and then uh old chetty holmgren also, adding in Isaiah Hartenstein, too. Hurt right now, but huge, huge addition because that's where thun- the Thunder got hurt last year. Losing in the paint with Chet. Chet's so much fun. I love watching him. Edie would dominate him in the paint. Jokic would dominate him in the paint. The trees in Cleveland dominate him in the paint. Minnesota would dominate him in the paint. So you bring in a guy like Hartenstein, who's a good defender, who can score in the paint, and who can defend those bigger guys. That's, o- that's only beneficial to this team. Um, Aaron Wiggins, Isaiah Joe, Kaysan Wallace is going to be better, as well as other Jalen Williams. And this team has fucking 27 more picks, 30, 35. I'm not sure. And they control the Clippers picks for the next couple of years. And we'll dive into what that team looks like. But Thunder wise, this roster is it's so flexible to where they can go big. They can go small. They can go a pure shooting lineup. They can go just pure defensive. And they can match up with literally anyone in the Western Conference. And they, by far, my favorite team going into um, into this so far. So, question for you guys is, is this what Memphis could have been? Do you think That's Memphis some- was on the same trajectory OKC was? Or is this, hey, we're blowing Taylor Jenkins out of the water. We're blowing the Memphis Grizzlies out of the water. And this is, we're the team, we're the new young team in the West. As someone that's self-aware, I wish that this was the case. They didn't. Ha- they haven't had as much injuries yet, because it will happen. It happens to everybody. But I think this is sadly what the Grizzlies should should have been. Even with injuries, though, I think this team because they're so deep, they're so flexible. Next man up. It's a plug and play. And if they, you know what, they need to trade for anyone at the deadline. Hey, here, take seventeen of our picks. Here's <laughs> four first rounders next year for a role player. Yeah. Yeah, the ammunition they have. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Those Clipper picks next year are going to be so, so valuable. They could be, in theory, they could be in the Cooper flag race. That's crazy wow. to even say. That's yeah. nuts. Wow. So, and it's impossible. It's, and, it's, and it's very, very possible. It's not like a pipe possible. train. This is very, very possible. Next Didn't thing I want to touch on is Denver. Um, Probably the best player in the league with Jokic, naturally. Bringing back the same core from last year, bringing back the same core from their championship team. Um, Michael Porter Jr., Christian Braun, Aaron Gordon, Jamal Murray, um, Peyton Wallace, Julian Strother, guys like that. It's a it's a good rotation. They're about eight deep. Brought in Westbrook as well. Don't know how I feel about that. Brought in Dario Saric. This team will go as far as Jokic takes them. They're only seven, eight deep, which does worry me come regular season time. What version of Murray are we going to see? How much does Jokic really care about the regular season now that he's won three MVPs? What does Westbrook, what does the fit with Westbrook look like now that we've lost KCP? 
we've really lost a they've lost a lot of shooting um, in mm-hmm. the off season, so that's definitely something that worries me. And we fixed the shooting by bringing in Westbrook. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Again, what version of Jamal Murray are we getting? Michael Porter Jr. This is an interesting piece. I don't know what kind of season he's going to have. He makes a ton of money to where his contract is. I don't want to say virtually untradeable, but it's going to take like a team like Washington or Charlotte to really front that money. Because if he doesn't play well, that's one of your minimal shooters that you do have. Um, so I really, I, I do worry about um, Denver. Now, for you guys, a question I had, Jamal Murray, what do you think he's going to look like come this season? Like, are we going to see the playoff Jamal Murray of two years ago? Or are we just going to kind of see the aging, not really aging 22 points per game, Jamal Murray, and maybe we'll go off once every three weeks? What, what, do, you, what do you think and really the importance that he is to this team? The Nuggets kind of have the same problem that the Bucks are going to have, where you have a the key piece is really if he's out, for our example, would be Chris Middleton or name. If they're out, the court's not going to get spaced. Obviously, it's a little different giving – it's Jamal Murray, but like you said, they brought in Russell Westbrook to try to fix things. So the key piece for them will obviously be Murray. I think it's the latter half of what you said. I think we'll probably score about 20 a game, 22, maybe go off once every three weeks. But it's going to be very difficult if he's not producing from the outside for them to win games. Yeah, and, and how much of a leap do we think Michael Porter Jr. can make this year? Or does he not make a leap at all? Yeah, I, I feel very much like we are going to see the same version of not just Jamal Murray, but Porter. And that's what scares me. No joke. I know we were all hyping up KCP earlier. I think they will feel that much deeper than they are even expecting right now. Oh, yeah. I 100% agree there. So we'll definitely talk about them moving forward. Uh, Minnesota, obviously, made the trade to get rid of Carl Anthony Towns the centerpiece of the team for many, many years until Ant came along. Um, outside of that, team's relatively the same. Connolly, Edwards, Shane McDaniels, Gobert, um, Nas Reed added Julius Randle and DiVincenzo from the trade, drafted um, Rob Dillingham. Should be a really, really fun team. I think they're going to be a lot better than last year. I think with you getting rid of Cat, bringing in DiVincenzo, I think he's going to be a huge, huge piece. He could play off the ball. Him and Dillingham can run the second unit. Um, and then he can even play along with Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Steven Chenzo is great moving it off the ball and really playing off the ball. And even when he needs to be on the ball, he's going to be, he can definitely alleviate um, Anthony Edwards if he's going through a shooting slump or whatnot. I think this team's really, really deep and really good. Um, and they're only going to get better because they're so, so young. Um, they lost Kyle Anderson, which is a shame. Former Grizzly. Um, he's on Golden State. Slow mo, he's gone. Yeah, he's one guy. Um, yeah, that was this, this should be a very watch. fun team to watch, and I think one that can rival the Thunder for the top spot in the West. Final two teams: Jazz. Um, they're funky. They're a fun team. Interesting. Sexton, Marketing. Uh, drafted Keontae George as well. Um, Cody Williams from Colorado. John Collins, Walker Kessler. Interesting roster. Um, don't think they're really going to go anywhere in such a deep West. And then Portland. How much can Scoot do? What can he improve on? Can he take another step? Can he be at, at the level of Wembenyama? I don't think so. This team's just going to be bad. They're going to be bad for a while unless he can turn it around. They're bringing back the same team from last year. DeAndre Ayton, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons. Added in Denny Avdia from the Wizards, one of the Wizards' only good players. So that's a nice addition. I just can't see this team competing in the West in such a loaded, loaded conference. So we'll open up the floor thoughts, questions, concerns with any of these teams. Yeah, I, I know. I think you hit it on the head, Coleman. My my biggest thing with this division specifically is just Denver. Even though they're the same team mostly, they do feel like a bit more of a question mark. And Jokic, as much as he might maybe plays it up to him not caring about basketball and wanting to be just in Serbia racing horses, I do think at some point, though, that that would be a concern. And, and again, maybe it's all just a facade, but I really think he's done so much already. At some point, you, you you won't be carrying as much. And so Denver, I would not be shocked at all to see them finish third uh, in this division. I don't know. I think the Timberwolves are, are – we'll see the big – we'll see the impact 
the true impact that Cat had on the team. Um, I know f- uh, from the times they played the Grizzlies, um, they Cat would always torch them, f- whether we were healthy or not. Um, so I know he was a big player on the team. I know they had now Julius Randle, and um, I never was a big Rudy Gobert fan, but um, he's there. So um, yeah, opens up some shots for Gobert, Luke. Watch out! Watch yeah. out! Ooh. But yeah, I mean, Ant's just this. He's he, he might he's probably the face of the league of one of the faces of the league at this point in time. I think um, I think probably Luca would be um, the face of the league. But yeah, the Timberwolves. We'll see the the big impact um, that Cat had or not. So I agree with everybody in what you said. I think T Wolves actually should probably win it out. That's my hot take. I think Anthony Edwards has a great year. He's the next face of the. NBA, as I've said before. Joker, although people are concerned that he might be wanting to race Serbian horses year-round, the only thing that matters is what happens during the game. If the other 23 hours, 24 hours, 22 hours of the day, he wants to go watch horse racing, I don't care. And OKC, the only problem I see with them is I think they're going to be like a game back, kind of like just flip-flop what happened to Minnesota. Like they're all, it's going to be those three yep. for the race and just switch out a game or two because maybe an injury or whatever happens. But they're all going to be right in the running for it. Yeah. And even with Jokic, I know we're all dogging on, on the Nuggets. Jokic is Jokic. He's the one that MVP three to the last four years. He's a transcendental or, and NBA player. Really one of the best players of all time. Again, I'm not saying top 10, top 20, but he's up there. I think they'll be fine. It's a big fine. It's not like a, they'll be good. They'll be fine with him. Um, next year is really when I do start to worry. And, and and Jake, I really think you hit the nail on the head. The loss of KCP and the addition of Westbrook, that's really, really, really going to hurt them. Um, Westbrook's going to help them on the second unit, come into games, spark plug. But I think it's – we'll just go into the picks. I think it's Minnesota 1. Like you said, but I think it's – they're a game up, half game up. They're flip-flopping the entire season. Minnesota 1, Thunder 2, Nuggets 3. Jazz four and then uh, Portland five. I got, I got um, OKC, Timberwolves, Denver, Utah Blazers. Uh, only thing I want to call out there is with what you were just saying, Coleman. I, I think Denver, they're going to be feeling that KCP hole. I second that, Jake. Your your lineup there. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I will add about the um, the Thunder. Um, I still think they're a very young team, um, even though they ha- they are very very deep. I feel like that'll play a role if we're comparing them to the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, one thing they had a problem with is uh, um, having um, a lot of playoff. I know they made it to the playoffs last year, but having just playoff experience in tough times, I think will be uh, be something to look out for, I guess. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, they got there. They were in the Western Conference Finals a couple wins away from playing in the finals. Yep. The fact that the team this young has yeah, that already is amazing. And yeah, they have arguably league MVP, second favorite MVP in Shea Gilders Alexander. It, oh yeah, this team's really, really set up for success. Which leads me to a point of: Is Sam Presti the smartest person in basketball? Maybe outside of Brad Stevens. Maybe everyone's dogging on him, Do- dogging on the man years and years ago for he's got all these picks. This is never going to work out. Picks are irrelevant. Look at this team now. They traded for Shea. They traded for Harden. They gave the boat, the cruise ship, to the Clippers for Shea Gilders Alexander. And look at him now. And look where Paul George is. Not even playing for the damn Clippers anymore. Kawhi's hurt. Paul George is in Philly. Now, I'm not saying uh, who won the trade or whatnot, but still, they the picks work. Sam Presti's, we're all playing uh, checkers. He's playing chess. He's a genius. I mean, and he has to do that. That's the thing is he has to do that. He had to kind of makes you know do the transaction that he did and pick make the picks that he did because quite frankly no it's it's similar to memphis very similar like nobody's going to okc it's not exactly a destination anybody wants to go to so finding anybody in the free agency market is a it's pretty pretty much impossible so you you gotta you gotta develop the talent and you gotta figure out a way to keep the talent so um i think that's Even the trade for Caruso, it's not just Shea. The trade yeah. for Caruso, the trade for Hartenstein. These role players who in the regular season may not be the biggest impact, but they're postseason guys. It's what we talked about with Drew. 
postseason guys, guys you want on your playoff rotation, who's going to bring experience, who's going to bring defensive value and depth to that team. Um, and then they, I mean, not that they drafted well, but they have drafted Chet, Dort, <laughs> Wiggins, Kaysan Wallace, who I love, great shooter, um, and also a really, really good defender. I think this, I, I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Thunder. One thing we're overlooking, I completely agree with everything Coleman said as far as the rankings, but this division is going to probably have the MVP between Shy, Joker, or Anthony Edwards, which is something, obviously, these three teams could all win the division, but one of them is going to be the MVP, in my opinion, that we're all overlooking. That's a, that's a great call out. Absolutely. I think that's three out of the four favorites, not including Doncic. 